Sunday, you guys. Trevor's coming to get the waffle maker because, as I mentioned in the last vlog, we're making waffles today. Ooh, yes. I'm going to need the medium mixing bowl of that. Or just all of the mixing bowls. Yay! It's literally our first time using this. <laughs> this is our waffle maker. This is a Cuisinart waffle maker. We got it for our wedding. And I don't know if there's like necessarily like a specific name for this model. I'm sure that there is. I just don't know it. But yeah, I'm just gonna wipe this down and then we can get to mixing up the batter. And you guys saw me setting this up earlier, but this is what we're using. I'm gonna be using this pancake and waffle mix. This is the Birch Benders Just Add Water mix. But for waffles, apparently you do need to add water and oil. So we have some canola oil. For my waffles, I'd like to do a set of chocolate chip and then a set of blueberry, or actually I might do them together. That actually sounds really good. Um, then we have some butter. This is the Lando Lakes butter with olive oil and sea salt. I actually really like this one. And then just some old fashioned syrup. This one is the molasses and brown sugar one. And then my banana bread's back there from the last vlog. <laughs> so for six to eight pancakes, Oh, wait. I'm assuming it's going to be the same serving size for waffles, but... Babe, how many waffles do you want? <clears throat> just two. Just two? It makes a Belgian waffle. I think you're right with just I'm two. I'm not Belgian. Let's go with three. You want three of those. Okay. Gotcha. Should I go with five? Shh. So we need to do one cup of mix. Please stop touching me, Trevor. Trevor, stop touching, stop tickling me. You're so obnoxious. One cup of mix. Sorry, Spartacus is out in the backyard right now, so he's playing back there. You hear that noise? Would you say that this waffle thing is four inches? Deep? No, wide. Or would you say it's eight inches wide? Eight inches. Okay. So if you want three of these, so I do need to make this okay Spartacus excuse you excuse you sir 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 get out of here then we need three quarter cup of water all right and since I'm doing one and a half cups of mix that's just two tablespoons of oil okay we'll mix her up Okay, cool. So I am going to put about a third of this batter. Is this enough for a waffle? I can't even tell. Then mine. I want some chocolate chips. And then some blueberries because I have them so why not why not make a fancy waffle so we lost our manual and we had to look everything up online but I'm supposed to season it with some cooking oil do you want to go first yours is the um, plain batter over here so I'm just plain huh Yes, you are. Basic I asked. Bitch. I I'm asked you if you wanted. So it says to, so fill it up. I guess all the way. I don't see a line. Yeah, I know. I don't think that this is the correct one. And then distribute it evenly. Cool. Okay. And then close it. You gotta do it right away, Trevor. You gotta. Close it and rotate it. Other way. Hey, bud. Are you sunbathing? Hmm? <laughs> hey, thank you. You go, boy. It's not bad for the first one. Uh, you can do it for a couple minutes longer if you want to. A couple I minutes. Don't, I don't know if you want. Hold on. Here, just set it down. Okay, so a million years later, it's finally my turn. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> and I think we have more batter than we need. Good thing I showed you how to do it. Yeah, I got to watch you mess it up. I'm gonna respray this down. Okay. Overflowing just a little bit, but that's also because I have these little toppings and stuff in here. I don't know how this is going to work out with these blueberries and chocolate chips in here, but we'll find out. Okay, so here we go. Close her down. And I'm going to go to the max. Okay. And here is mine, the chocolate chip and blueberry waffle. Then we're going to do some butter, obviously. It's already melting. And then for mine, sugar actually. It's so right over top. A little garnish to the side. Yum! Hey, so kind of want to say sorry if you are not really a food or cooking person. I feel like that's just all my vlogs have been because like what else are we doing? I just finished editing the previous vlog right now and it was a lot of cooking. It, that was when I made the banana bread and all of that junk. And then I realized I was popping on here right now to show you guys how I make my pico de gallo because we're gonna make some taco bowls tomorrow and I'm also gonna make my dinner right now. It's gonna be like a simple salmon bowl. So yeah, sorry that's all cooking. Really, there's not much else to do, but I also know that there's a lot of you guys out there who have messaged me saying that you like seeing like the meals that I'm cooking, gives you some like ideas and everything. So here's basically two more that we're about to embark on. Okay, so my pico de gallo is really, really simple. I cannot handle spice, so this is a super mild pico de gallo. Like I'm talking no heat at all. Obviously, if you like spice, you can definitely add in some jalapenos or whatever you'd like, but this is what I do for mine. So I do tomatoes, limes, cilantro, and a white onion. I'm probably only gonna use like half of this and then just a little bit of salt and literally that's all you need to do. So I don't really wanna make too big of a batch. So I'm just gonna put everything in this container because the thing with mine is I like to let it marinate overnight. I think I already said that. And also too, this is really great with tortilla chips. I used to actually make like homemade tortilla chips to go with this, which actually, that sounds really good and I have the time to do that. Maybe we'll go to the grocery store tomorrow and pick up some tortillas because that sounds like a good idea with this. But anyways, for right now, I'm just going to chop up the tomatoes, the onion, and the cilantro, get it all in the bowl, and then I just douse all of that with lime juice and some salt, and then I just let it sit and marinate, and it makes a really, really good, super flavorful pico de gallo. start on my salmon bowl and this is actually gonna be a really really quick dinner to put together. I'm gonna go ahead and line this sheet with some foil and I'm actually gonna do a light layer of cooking spray just because the salmon that I have is skinless so I just don't want it to stick to the pan. And then this is just like literally the simplest salmon ever. Just some olive oil right over top and then some pepper. And I currently have the oven preheating to 400 degrees. Normally I do about 10 minutes in the oven, but this is a pretty thin piece of salmon. So I'm actually just gonna do like seven minutes or so. Oven's preheated. And go ahead and pop this in. Like seven minutes or so. Start it there and then I'll check on it once it's ready. But now I'm gonna do the kale. And then Trevor prepared some extra rice for me the other night. So I am gonna go ahead and heat this up. I think this is good. Just load up the kale. And just saute this. Salmon's about to be done soon, so we're gonna work on the rice right now. I'm just gonna pour the rice in here, and we're gonna make it kind of like a lemon pepper rice. So, it's gonna do literally just a hit of salt. Squeeze some lemon in there. And 
some black pepper. A decent mountain there. And just stir this all together. Yeah, in seven minutes was all. That looks good. Then taking some bitch and sauce because it's the best. Just gonna go ahead and put some right in the pan here. This sauce over this kale is so freaking good. And then just pour it right over the rice. And then finally, the salmon. So there is my salmon bowl, just lemon, pepper, white rice, sauteed kale in bitchin' sauce, and just a baked salmon right on top. Okay, so time for a little dessert. I have these raspberries that I got last week from Mother's, and then I saw this at the grocery store today. This is the Sabra Dark Chocolate Dessert Dip and Spread. I thought it was like really interesting. It is a chickpea-based dip, so curious what that tastes like, but it is supposed to be healthier than just, you know, eating a ton of straight chocolate or anything like that. So I thought I would rinse off these raspberries and uh, try the dip. So here we go, got the chocolate dip. Smells chocolatey. Got my raspberries. Dip this in. Ooh. It's kind of thick. It definitely just like scooped all up in there. Let's see if I can get some more. That's good. It kind of tastes kind of like a thicker chocolate pudding. You don't necessarily taste like a ton of chickpeas or anything. It's definitely nice and chocolatey. Mm. Okay, so I am just chilling here and I'm actually watching my own vlogs. In particular, I'm watching the Belize and Australia vlogs, my two big travel vlogs. It's just like it's such a different time seeing us travel and eat and explore and be around people and stuff. It's almost making me sad. Like, are we ever going to be back to that? But if you guys haven't seen those vlogs, if you're new to my channel, I will link them down below. The Belize ones in particular are like weird because they start off at our old apartment. And obviously we don't live there anymore if you're new to my channel. We moved in November, so we haven't been here for like very, very long. But yeah, I'll link those down below for you guys. Hey friends, I'm going back to the grocery store. I really do try to limit how many times I go out to the grocery store. I am trying not to do more than once a week, but I forgot so many things. And I was able to get away with not really going to the grocery store for a two, three week period because I was like just doing really bad at cooking. I was really uninspired. And so I was just like eating junk and stuff. A lot of nights I wasn't even like eating dinner. I was eating like a bag of chips, but recently, if you haven't noticed, because I've been cooking more in vlogs, I've gotten back into cooking. I'm liking getting creative with what I'm making. But the thing is, I'm only gonna get creative if I have what I need in the house to make the thing that I wanna make. So fortunately that does mean if I forgot something, I need to go back for it. So that's what we're doing, obviously, because I did mention yesterday that I do want to make homemade tortilla chips. So, I mean, I already knew I was going to go back to the grocery store since I want to make that, and I'm really, really excited for that. That's something that I haven't made in a very long time because of how long it takes. I don't have a fryer, so I have to literally fry each tortilla in a pan of oil and flip each one. So it's like a labor of love, but they're really, really good. And since I have all this ample time, why not and i'm sorry that this is like the first time that i'm talking to you guys today and it's already like five o'clock but i was just in so many meetings today back to back to back literally from 10 30 a.m until 3 p.m and then i worked out right afterwards so i've just been non-stop which is great i am grateful for that because it means that i'm working i have a job and it also means that i have things to do during the day but still i was just like can I get a breather? <laughs> okay, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys what I got on my little mini grocery run. First thing that I got was just some cherry tomatoes. We go through these really, really fast, so I figured might as well get us another pack, especially since I'm making so many salads right now. And then I got some raspberries. I ate up all those raspberries last night with that dip, so got some more along with some strawberries to try the dip with. And then I got, these are like one of my favorite snacks. These are the Quaker's Cheddar Rice Cakes. 
And then I got some skinny corn popcorn. The sea salt and pepper is the best flavor. It's so freaking good. I'm just like so obsessed with it. Then I got some corn tortillas. This is for me to fry up as chips. And then I haven't had these in forever. They just like caught my eye and I've been missing them. These are the Keebler's fudge sticks. So they're basically wafers covered in chocolate. I'll need to hide these for myself so I don't overindulge, but really, really wanted these. Got a couple of lemons. I go through lemons pretty quickly. And then for the Choco Bowls, I got this fajita mix and also some smoked paprika to go with it. And then I just got us two bubblies. There weren't bubblies when I went to the grocery store over the weekend at the one that I went to, but this one across the street did have bubblies, so I got us a raspberry and a strawberry. Okay, so let's get started on these tortilla chips. First off, you need tortillas, obviously, like I showed you. You're gonna need some oil. I'm just gonna use canola oil. And then just some salt and pepper and some limes. And pro tip, I would definitely have a big plate, put a paper towel over it so that you can drain the chips as you finish, and then just, oh God, ow. And then just a skillet. And then it's pretty basic, you know, you chop up the tortillas into triangles, heat up the oil. I like to get it nice and hot, then just cook everything over like a medium setting, because I, I get impatient. I don't want it to cook too fast, but I also don't want it to cook too slow. And then just lay out the chips, let them drain it from the oil a little bit. And then I like to just like toss them all into one big bowl and season them with salt, pepper, and lime. Okay, so I'm gonna get started on the cilantro lime rice and I'm just gonna make this easier on myself. I'm gonna use our rice cooker. This is actually her first time using it because I'm not gonna use minute rice, I'm gonna use regular rice. Okay, so I don't know how many of you guys following me are Filipino or have watched Joe Koi special, but there is a secret to cooking perfect rice every time. It's a Filipino secret. Basically, fill up this thing with water and rice, there's rice underneath there, and you're gonna wanna take your finger and have your finger sit on the top of the rice, and the water needs to come up to this line right here. I kid you not, it's gonna cook perfectly every single time. Although this is a new rice cooker, so hopefully it still works. Plugged her in, covered the top. Man, I feel like I'm my mother now that I have a rice cooker out here. And cook, cool. And just gonna let it do its thing. I took a shower and the rice finished cooking. Like I said, perfect every time. But now I'm gonna start cooking up the meat. I just have some ground chicken that I'm gonna cook up in this. This is like a little fajita seasoning packet that I found. Then I'm gonna add some smoked paprika, probably some white onions, and then I'm gonna take some of that rice, turn it into cilantro lime rice, and then we'll start assembling my taco. start assembling this. Just starting off with a base of the cilantro lime rice, then some of this meat just right over top. Then just a little bit of cabbage. I love cabbage personally so definitely don't mind it in there. 
Then if you remember the pico de gallo from yesterday. Put some of that just right over top here. Then I'm also going to put the pico to the side for the chips. And finally, just some of this Mexican cheese blend. Just a little bit. Pour it over top. And I had some little leftover cilantro, so put that over top as well. Okay, then I got my chips and my pico. So when I was walking Spartacus this morning, I saw a delivery truck come by and they delivered our Target order today. So I thought we'd start off the morning with an unboxing right now. So I'll show you guys what we got. There's like a thing in here that I'm really, really excited about because last night, Trevor and I got in a little bit of an argument over who got to use the last of the big bowls that we have. So. I was like, no more. <laughs> oh my God, these are way bigger than I thought they were gonna be. Okay, well, I mean, see those new salad bowls, but these are massive. I guess if I'm making a really, really ridiculously large salad, this will work. These are way bigger than I thought they were gonna be, but it's okay, I'll make it work somehow for something. <laughs> and then I also got us some stain remover for laundry because we, we're out of pine saw one day. So Trevor decided he was gonna use shout to clean the floors, not knowing that shout is for laundry and not for the floors. So he used up the rest of it, but I need it for stains, obviously, before I do laundry. Target didn't ship shout, but it ships this one. This is seventh generation laundry stain remover. And it's actually a plant-based product. So I'm interested to try that out. Also got us some Q-tips because we're out. Got some food for the animals. There's pips and Spartacus has a good amount of food. That was just like a little bit of a refill. This is like Trevor's current body wash in case your man is looking for a new one. Show it to you guys. This is the Everyman Jack body wash and shower gel in sandalwood. It smells really, really good. I like it a lot, which you know is what matters. And then I'm going back to regular deodorant. I've been using the Tom's natural deodorant just because they're the only natural deodorant that I could find that had an antiperspirant version. And I just lately, over the past like couple months, like every time I'd lift up my arms and smell that deodorant, it smelled like BO to me. And I know that it's the deodorant itself because when I ordered a new stick and opened it, I got that smell again. So I think like my nose has like changed towards that smell. So I'm over it. So I just got myself some regular deodorant. This is the Degree Motion Sense Ultra Clear Black and White in Pure Rain. I just, I had to go back to a regular one. Got some AAA batteries because we don't have any apparently. Then I got us a couple toothbrushes. I'm sure that this is very, very exciting right now. And then I also got a refill of just like the peach ring smart sweets. But yeah, that was everything that I got from Target on this round. For right now, I'm going to start working and then I'm going to do a workout. But our living room looks so bad right now. I did laundry last night and some stuff I needed to air dry. So it's all just like hanging on our couch and on our staircase. Our apartment looks like a freaking alleyway in a Broadway play right now. But speaking of the staircase, I don't think I showed you guys. We cleared it out. If you guys remember, there was like all of this stuff lined along here. I'm sure that it was bothering a good chunk of you, but we finally sorted it, cleaned it out and everything. And our stairs feel like five times wider now. Feeling refreshed, just jumped out of the shower and now, Gonna make myself a salad because that's like all I've been having for lunches lately. Gotta water the basil. The mint's dead. I've given up on the mint. The mint will not happen. Last time I went grocery shopping, I got a few different like little toppings and stuff for salads just because I want to switch up my salads. I wanna get kind of creative with them. So for today, we're gonna be making like a hybrid Italian Greek salad. So I'm gonna start with the dressing, then we'll assemble the rest of the pieces. Okay, so like I said, we're starting with the dressing. Just got some olive oil here, red wine vinegar, garlic salt, 
pepper, Italian seasoning, and some minced garlic. This one from Trader Joe's is like the best like pre-minced garlic I've ever had in my life. I've had quite a few and I just feel like this is the only one that doesn't have like there's like a weird flavor that they usually have and this one actually doesn't have that but anyways like I said we'll start assembling this start out with some oil and vinegar do a good amount though actually because this is the whole dressing some garlic in here like that much should be good some Italian seasoning some fresh cracked black pepper and just a bit of garlic salt and then we're just gonna whip that all up together set it to the side I've got a red onion then some feta cheese I personally prefer the reduced fat there's just something about like the fact that's a little bit drier than the full fat that I like personally and then some Italian dry salami some grape tomatoes and of course some spring mix unfortunately all of my cucumbers are dead or else I would use cucumbers on this, but that's fine. First things first, just some spring mix in here. And I got the big box of spring mix this time because I knew I was going to make so many salads. Then for the onion, I kind of want rings. So I'm just going to be lazy and cut them like this. Try to cut them nice and thin. Take off the outer layers. And then I'm actually going to quarter the tomatoes this time. Just feel like I want a smaller tomato in this salad. And you guys, I promise that this is like the last cooking thing that will be on this vlog. I'm so sorry. That's like all I'm doing lately is cooking. Muy importante. These are sliced Kalamata olives. I got them pre-sliced because I just like don't feel like slicing my own olives. I'm being very lazy about it. But I haven't had Kalamata olives in a salad in a long time. So when I saw these, I was all over it. I'm really upset that those new salad bowls didn't work out in size. I am going to go try to get some new ones, whether I do it through Amazon or Target. But... Yeah, that was a bummer. Then we're gonna do some salami. Let me just stack them on top of each other. I freaking love salami. Just gonna quarter them to make them more bite sized for my salad. Then feta cheese. Oops, should probably take off the cover here. Just sprinkle that right in. And I almost forgot. I got croutons to start adding to my salad. These are Italian seasoning croutons. So I'm going to just do a little bit just for some crunch. Alright, so there is the salad. Give you guys a close-up before I put the dressing on. But there it is, just with all the dry ingredients. It looks so freaking good. Now the big moment. Then just drizzle it right on. Yes. Okay, so I'm coming in here to film. The hell is this thing? This isn't for me. Trevor was in here earlier, leaving crap in my filming space. This is me. Th this is not me. The hell. Although it's not like my filming space is pristine. Anyways, but still. Come on, bro. Hi, so I just finished filming. The thing that I was filming right now is actually a collab video that Michelle and I are doing together but apart. A quarantine collab. You guys will see when we put it all together. But I just finished now and speaking of content and YouTube and stuff, I am, for anyone who's been following this journey, Ooh, Delaney just posted a vlog. I know what I'm watching while I'm having dinner. Oh my God, it went up even as I was filming. I am now up to 970 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. I'm so close to 1000. So what I think I'm gonna do right now is take a quick stroll over to the liquor store over here and get myself a preemptive bottle of champagne to hopefully be able to celebrate with in the next couple of days. Okay, you guys, so I got my champagne. But as I was putting it in here, look at this freaking fridge. I, <laughs> I cannot stand this. Like I've been watching everyone's vlogs and when they restock their fridges look so nice and this just looks like honestly a crapshoot. So I've decided 
I'm gonna reorganize my fridge right now. Okay, sorry the light's against me, but like welcome to the nightmare that is our fridge at the moment. It looks so bad right now. <sighs> I think I'm gonna go one area at a time just pull everything out and reorganize it so that I can get it to look at least halfway decent. the reorganized fridge it feels a lot better I definitely am throwing out a lot of stuff so we have a lot of extra room in here for next time we restock on groceries and stuff but starting over here obviously I left these as is because what else are we gonna put in here should probably grab another one to put in there and fill it in but on the side here I decided to put like any sauces um, condiments and stuff like that so we have Trevor's marinara and the Alfredo sauce back here and then some mayo for Trevor this is his dressing this like lemon dressing and then some heavy whipping cream which he likes to use when he does Alfredo sauce then I just have some low sodium chicken broth right here then in the deli drawer I finally used the divider so I divided it up into meats and then cheeses and dips so over here on the meats all of the like flatter deli meats are in the front here I have some sausages back here just kind of like a thicker pack of roasted turkey breast back here and then this is a steak that Trevor wants to cook and then for sauces we have all of our bitchin sauces right here you guys know I love bitchin sauce so does Trevor so we have two tubs of the original right here and then the pesto bitchin sauce and the cilantro chili bitchin sauce also have the olive tapenade that I've been loving lately and then this Sabra dark chocolate dessert dip and spread which is absolutely amazing then my favorite pesto back here this is the Trader Joe's Genova pesto have a huge tub of Parmesan cheese back here this is the Frigo Parmesan one of my favorite brands some uh, mozzarella and cheddar mix which I'm going to use to make mac and cheese one night some extra Parmesan this is just the Stater Brothers brand some Tillamook Mexican four cheese blend then some feta which should probably turn the correct way a block of Parmesan it's for different purposes I'm going to defend this so I like to shave this for sandwiches but like the shredded ones I like to cook with and then this is just a big block of Tillamook cheddar cheese then I organize our produce drawers so in this one I have a mix of like hard veggies and fruits so I have some broccoli some carrots these are all of my lemons that I have some tomatoes I know that you're supposed to leave these at room temperature but I'm just not eating them quick enough to get to them in time so I'm refrigerating them and then I have some strawberries back here some raspberries that's for that Sabra chocolate dip then we're finishing up this pack of grape tomatoes I have another pack ready to go down here and then some blueberries then in the next drawer this is like our salads and like cooking greens drawer so I have my spring mix over here some kale this is some leftover spinach for Trevor a Caesar salad kit my favorite Caesar salad kit actually and then back here I have some parsley and there is a cabbage buried underneath there as well then up here on the main shelf I made so much room in here so over here I have all of this jarred stuff that just doesn't fit in the doors which is fine because this is the stuff that we use the most so it's just more accessible if we leave it here so I have uh, minced garlic 
some Kalamata olives and then two packs of just like the green olives and then this is black olives in here then I have all of my kombuchas right here the front three are the strawberry lemonade I have a ginger one back here from health aid and then this is the GT's trilogy just a big one of that then I have my beers these are not Trevor's beers these are my beers but just they're all IPAs all the way back here some stone IPA this next one is a stone IPA but it's a double IPA which I think I'm gonna have tonight and then two Elysian space dust these are my favorite beers of all time then this is just kind of random I have uh, just some leftover ginger beer some almond milk and then back there is the champagne that I hope to pop open when I reach a thousand subscribers and some soda water and then of course our Brita for our water. Up here is kind of like the leftovers drawer so this is like my taco bowls that I made last night and then my two banana breads so this is just like the shelf of things that we need to get to and eat. Then here I just have some bread and then this is potato so it's kind of like a carb section. I know that potatoes are supposed to be room temperature but again I'm not going to be able to cook it in time so I'm just going to refrigerate it to make sure they don't spoil before I can get to them. And then up top here is full of stuff that I can't reach in the back, so I'm going to have to ask Trevor to get to those later. But I'm just going to keep the animals' foods up here. We feed them half a can each at dinner time, plus their dry food. So every other day we have to refrigerate their dry food. Then up here is where I moved all of my chocolates. I was just having trouble seeing them over here and forgot that I had them at all. And this is where I used to keep them. I can't remember why we moved them over there, but I prefer having them over here because I know where they are. And then just our butter. Then we have like a bunch of sauces and condiments that we don't typically use like every week or whatever. This is more specialty stuff. Some like really, really nice blue cheese, hoisin sauce, salsa. What is this back here? That's oyster sauce. This is a ponzu sauce. This is a hoisin garlic marinade and some rice vinegar. Then down here is kind of like extra dairy stuff so we have creamers some of cream randomly some sake back there some more creamer some milk and then all of trevor's yogurts which are just like constantly falling in the vein of my existence but yeah that was my little refrigerator reorganization and um i guess tour of what's in my fridge i'm not gonna get into the freezer tonight a, I don't want to, and B, like, it's fine. Like, the way it's organized down there is fine. I don't need to touch it. But I am going to go ahead and warm up my taco bowl for myself and just kind of enjoy the rest of the night. So I will see you guys in the next vlog, which I'm hoping will begin with a little celebration. <laughs>